Hey guys, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video and I've got some company. Hey guys. So we're out here kind of in the forest. I wouldn't really call this a forest, would you Joel? No. Uh, and that's because it's been raining all day in the bush where the sun can't really shine. It's super wet. Out here it's dry enough that we can get this video made for you. So let's go ahead and pan down and I'll show you what we're going to be talking about today. This is going to be a comparison video between two very cool rather expensive and also rather popular knives. And by the way, this video has been requested quite a few times when, uh, when I actually asked, I think I asked on Instagram and on the Facebook page, which were the two that you'd be most interested in seeing a comparison between. And a lot of people picked these two, I think largely because of the price point. So what we have here, you already seen F1X. So this is the Falcon even F1X. Hold on, focus you. There we go. It won't. It's only taking the ground. The other knife we've got, once I get both knives, it should focus properly. There we go. So the other knife we've got here is the Chris Reeve Knives Neala. Okay, so we've got a couple of knives here. Both are fairly expensive. These, when they were retail, were available at retail. The Neala was around 250 The F1X is going to be a couple hundred bucks. So neither one of these are budget-friendly knives. They're both sort of hard use outdoor type of folders. They're very similar in size, very similar in philosophy of use, reasonably similar in cost. Now, size and weight, there are a couple of differences. Joel, can you grab both of these and tell us what the biggest difference between the two of them is? This one's heavier. Oh, come and say it into the mic. Uh. The F1X is heavier? Yeah, so the F1X is noticeably heavier. It really feels like a little tank of a knife. Um, and that's going to be beneficial to some people and other people that's going to put them off a little bit. I would suggest that neither one of these are, you know, the kind of knife you'd want for, I don't know, ultralight backpacking or something like that. But for, you know, outdoor hiking, you know, hunting, whatever, both are going to be pretty well suited to those jobs. Uh, let me get into the actual numbers here for you before we move on to the blades. So the actual size here, the Neala is eight and three quarter inches. The F1X is eight and five eighths inches. The Neala has a four and one eighth inch blade. Okay, so four and one eighth inches here, right on four inches for the F1X. Both handles are the exact same measurement, 4 and 11 sixteenths. Now, another significant difference that's going to matter to you if you have really big hands, the Neala has a little less grip area. So we've got 4 inches, really 4 and an eighth inches on the F1X, and about 3 and 3 quarter inches on the Neala. And then, of course, that weight that Joel pointed out for us, uh, this guy is a full, it's like seven and a half, maybe even more, I guess 7.7 .7 ounces. And this guy, the Neala, is only 6.1 ounces. So there is a fairly significant difference in the weight. Now, I do want to throw these both in the sheaths and actually get Joel to do, the, do his test one more time for us. Hold on. Okay, buddy, if I hand you these again, I want to notice, I think... I think, my theory is that the sheath on the F1X is a lot lighter, so feel them both again and tell me which one is lighter when you have them in the sheaths. This one. So the Neala is still lighter, and yeah, I'd say I agree with that. The Neala is definitely still a bit lighter, and this sheath is about two ounces, so this knife, this sheath is probably around two ounces, not light enough. It's a little lighter, but not light enough to make up the difference. Okay, so uh, that's how these two compare from a size and weight standpoint. We've already covered how they compare from a cost standpoint as well as a use, use standpoint. Now, the one thing I will say is the F1X is a little more of a dedicated hard use knife. It is thick and stocky. The blade stock on this is five millimeters, which is... Yeah, a little more than five sixteenths. It's it's almost a quarter of an inch thick. It's really, really thick and heavy duty. The Neala is still extremely thick and heavy duty. In fact, arguably as thick and heavy duty as you would ever want. All right, so perhaps the F1X, I know Joel would say the F1X is a little bit overkill, would you? Mm -hmm. You think the F1X is a little overly fat? Like thick and fat and heavy? Oh, 
All right, well, Joel's not too concerned about that after all. Okay, so yes, yeah, some would argue that the F1X is overkill and the Nayala is a better balanced knife, and we'll, we'll talk about that in our conclusions at the end. Um, so now that we've got that stuff out of the way, let's talk about these two blades. They both have some distinguishing features that are worth noticing. Let's take a close look at these two. So the Nayala is... A, in a single blade shape, hollow grind, um, sort of, you know, the Insingo, Insingo we would call sort of a modified sheep's foot. And then, of course, on the Falcon even, we have a more traditional drop point. Uh, stonewash finish on the Chris Reeve, uh, satin finish on the Falcon even, although there is a different finish available. I can't remember what the other finish is. Now, the steels here, this is S35VN, hardened to about 58 Rockwell. This is a laminated steel. So this is cobalt steel laminated with a softer stainless steel to make the knife tougher while still getting really, really good edge retention. And so I will say, uh, for those of you who are really, really big on Rockwell hardness, the Falcon even is going to have a harder edge. Uh, you know, does that mean it's definitely, does that mean it's necessarily more long lasting no there are a number of other factors to consider but let's just say both of these are going to be very very good performance steels and they're going to hold an edge quite a long time in outdoor uses where you're dealing with like wood and bone and you know fairly softer stuff all right um, now there's a pretty big and noticeable difference between the way these two knives achieve their cutting power all right the first one let's look at the Nayala first this is a hollow grind. So I'm going to put these down, use my hand as an example. So if this is a typical V grind, a hollow grind is actually going to be concave. All right. Well, the other knife, so the Nayala is the knife that Joel just picked up there, where the falcon even is actually convex, meaning the edges bow out like that. All right. Now, both have advantages. And we'll talk about those advantages are in a second. But I really, really like convex grinds because of their ability to be so tough, so durable, but to still cut really, really well, especially in sort of a, a bushcrafting, survival, you know, heavy-duty knife um, setting. Now, to contrast that with the hollow grind, okay, a hollow grind is a great way to take a knife that's thick and heavy duty and hard use and give it really, really good slicing performance. All right. I would argue that in general, a hollow grind is going to cut better than a flat grind or a convex grind. However, there are some specific places where one will shine over the other. Joel, out of these two blades, which one do you like better? Hmm? Out of these two blades, which one do you like better? Top or bottom? Uh, I like the top a little bit better. Yeah, so Joel likes the top one a little bit better, and I think he's got good reason for doing that. The, the top, this blade shape, is going to be a little more versatile. Okay, so yes, is this going to be a little bit tougher? Is it going to be very capable in the bush? Absolutely. However, if these are, say, your hiking knife or camping knife, Man, look at the size of this thing. You're, you're not cutting an apple with this. You're not. There's a lot of things that this is not going to be well suited for. Where the Nayala, it's going to be nearly every bit as tough as the F1X, although it's going to have the added ability of slicing pretty well for any kind of slicing tasks that you come across. All right, so that's how these two blades compare. I hope that's helpful to you as you're thinking about, you know, which one of these is better for you. I'm going to get Joel to come and help me do a little bit of whittling here to see how these blades compare. I'll let him start with the Nayala since he likes that blade shape a little bit better. I'll start with the Falcon even. Not that I necessarily like the blade shape better, but I just happen to have it in my hand. So one thing I will say, come over here so you can be on camera, bud. There we go. So Joel's just doing a little bit of sort of whittling, carving, if you were making a spear or if you were, you know, building a trap or if you're going to get making uh, a feather stick to start a fire. The one area where the falcon even is going to shine is just specifically in this area of making these really, really paper thin feathers. All right, the Nayala can 
can definitely do it, right? They can both, by the way, both of these knives can do the jobs of the other, but that convex zero grind means that you have a lot of control over how much you bite in or how thin. And so that's a pretty interesting, or that's a pretty good feature for bushcrafting type of stuff. Here, buddy, let's switch and we'll talk a little bit at the end about how they compare. There we go. And actually just this short time that I've been talking, Joel, show them what you've done. There we go. Joel's got a, a spear or a tent peg or, you know, there's any number of things you could nice. use that for. Um, the the Neala is very tough and very useful. And by the way, I, I'm not at all saying anything bad about this blade. I love this blade. Uh, it can definitely get the job done in the bush. And you can see I can still do a great job making those little curly cues. All right, let's get that stuff out of the way. We're going to move on now to the handle. Okay, so on the Neala, we've got a micarta handle, very, very heavily textured. We got jimping on the tang, both on the spine here where your thumb's going to land, as well as in here where you know, sort of these two fingers are going to land. In addition to that, we've got cross jimping here, just a very, very, very positive traction plan on the Neala. Let me switch over here, bud, and we'll trade, and then you can talk about which handle you like better as well. So. With the Falcon even, uh, this material has a weird name. They call it uh, through run. That's right. I think that's right. I should check my notes. Uh, thermal run. Let's get it right. Uh, they call it thermal run. It's a very hard, heavy duty plastic material. Uh, very, very heavily textured. Joel, I think last time we talked about this, described it like sandpaper. And it really is very, very heavily textured. So it does. So both of these have a very good traction plan. Uh, you could argue that the Neala is a little more comfortable, and I think it is. However, can I show them side by side for a sec? Um, the contrast, while the Neala is a little more comfortable uh, in terms of the traction plan, it's not quite as hand filling. So if I take a hammer grip on this for any kind of push cut or something, um, the Neala, I really kind of have to reposition my grip. It works best in a saber grip. I've just got a little more girth here with the Falcon Even. All right, Joel, do you want to share with us what you think about these two handles? Which one looks nicer? Um, the one on the bottom? Yeah, the Neala. I agree. The Neala is the prettier knife overall, and especially this, this micarta is beautiful. Which one is more comfortable? Uh, sorry, but the bottom one. Yeah, still the bottom one. Um, Joel really, Joel really loves this knife, and I absolutely get it. Um, so, by the way, I love it too. So I shouldn't, uh, I shouldn't say as if Joel likes it and no one else does, or I don't. Um, so the way these two compare, you know, there are significant differences, uh, but they're they both shine and they both get the job done in their own way. All right, now we've talked about the handle, we've talked about the blade, we've talked about the steel. The big last thing to talk about is going to be these two sheaths. We have the Zytel sheath for the F1X. And this is a pretty interesting sheath. Now, both of these sheaths do have one weakness. So this locks in pretty well. Now, when this tab is up, it's pretty positive retention, but it's not super, super strong, and I can shake this around a bit. The advantage that this has is that this can flip down and that locks the knife in and it is locked in solid, which is a big advantage if, you know, you're, I don't know, rock climbing or doing something where, you know, or if you carry your knife always on your pack uh, or if you want to carry it on a chest rig upside down, uh, all of those become options with this if you can sort of use these lashing points. Now, both of these sheaths are going to be primarily set up to carry on a belt, all right? So let's show you these two. So you can see the nylon loop here on the Falcon even, the leather loop on the CRK. 
Uh, now, both of these work really, really well, but they do require you to wear a belt. You can see I don't wear a belt most days, and I would specifically have to put one on if I was going to carry these one of these as my EDC. Obviously, I'm going out hiking or in the bush for some reason. I'm going to make sure I've got a belt because I want to have a knife on me. Uh, generally, I want a, a fixed blade rather than just my, my typical folding knife for the day. All right, so both of these sheaths sort of share that same weakness. They're not easy to set up for scout carry. They're not, you know, a, a Kydex sheath with a, with a bent over clip, especially one that could rotate would be a nice addition to both. All right. Now in terms of looks, I don't think there's much debate. Joel, which one do you think looks nicer? Do you want me to say first? I've got to say the leather on the Nayala is much prettier than the plain, rather boring, a little bit squared off Zytel on the F1X. So, you know, I think, and, and that's going to be a theme throughout this, guys. The, the CRK is the more artistic of the two knives, without a doubt. All right. Uh, so, and actually, with that last comparison on the sheath, I think it's a good time to move into sort of our overall thoughts on these two knives. All right, again, both very heavy, heavy duty capable knives. We're starting to lose the light here, so I'm gonna to have to wrap this up a little bit quickly. Uh, Joel, which one do you like better? No, Joel's a little distracted over there. Um, he has repeatedly talked about the fact that he likes the Chris Reeve a lot more, and I get it. You know, the Nayala is a beautiful knife. It's absolutely a piece of artwork that also works as a tool. Um, it feels great in hand. It's very, you know, fit and finish. Everything is fantastic on it. Now, from a practical standpoint, okay, the F1X is definitely no slouch, and it's not that it's inferior to the Nayala in any significant way. I will say it's a little more purpose built. Okay, so it's heavier duty, and that limits it in a lot of ways because this knife is only going to work sort of as a bushcraft survival knife, right? You're not using this in the kitchen. You're not using it around camp. You're not using it as an EDC very much. It's really got to be for that one purpose. Well, the Chris Reeve is so much more versatile. Can this be an EDC knife? Absolutely. You could put this on your belt and carry it with you all the time. Could it be an outdoor survival knife? Yes, no question. Uh, about the only thing this blade shape is not great for is going to be, you know, sort of as a hunting, skinning type of knife. But there is a great deal of versatility in the Nayala that you're not quite getting to the same degree on the F1X. All right, Joel, are you ready to wrap it up? Okay. Uh, Joel just wants to remind you. Like and subscribe. <laughs> Sorry about the uh, lack of enthusiasm there, but yeah, he wants to remind you to like and subscribe. Uh, make sure you check that link down below. I'm going to link to DLT Trading. Uh, for these kind of high-end fixed blades, DLT Trading is a great, great source. And uh, if you use that affiliate link, it does help the channel. Now, by the way, I'm not asking you, and I've never wanted you to pay more to use DLT, but if you're shopping around and DLT has a good price, then definitely use my link. That is a huge help to the channel. Thanks a lot for watching. Let me know which one of these you like down in the comments, and we will talk to you soon.